In this episode of Low Class Pro Patch Breakdown, we sat down with players from Cloud9 and Team Liquid to get their thoughts on Patch 5.6. So Aatrox now gets 20% of his maximum blood well for each enemy he hits with his ultimate, and that's kind of a weird change. I guess it's a tiny buff for him, but I don't think it'll change him too much because he usually goes into a fight with pretty high levels of blood well and uses his ultimate before his passive goes off. So. I guess it'll help if you're respawning from your passive and want to fully charge your blood on in the middle of a team fight, but I don't think it'll be too significant. So the any changes on patch 5.6 aren't actually too big. It makes her a little bit weaker uh, in her all-ins, but generally it's all about the burst damage and that isn't really affected. So the any changes are mainly for her tippers, or actually it's only for her tippers, and it's the aura. It makes it so that uh, level 1 of tippers does 15 less damage per second and level Two tippers does five less damage, and then level three does five more damage. But it's actually a slight nerf to Ami since you're not going to be worrying about late game too much on her, and it's mainly for the engage. Uh, this does make her slightly weaker um, in an all in at level six, but overall it won't affect too much as it's mainly about her CC and burst potential rather than the damage that the orb provides. So, Bard actually got a couple of changes, pretty much all buffs. The first change is a buff to his Q damage. It does 5 more damage level 1, and then scales up to 20 more damage level 2, and then at the final rank does actually 25 more damage, so it's actually a pretty big buff, but I don't think that's going to do too much for him. I mean, he, he's pretty much still a weak laner, and that's kind of where his weakness lies. He also got an E buff, where it lowered the cooldown on his E. Kind of useful as well, but again, his laning is his biggest weakness and his E doesn't do anything for his laning. Also, there's some sort of like quality of life buffs where it's easier to click on the portal and it's like you can get an assist from it and then other like clones can go on it, stuff like that, but not a big deal. And then finally, his ult made it so that neutral monsters like Baron and Dragon, they don't reset so they don't actually gain HP when you uh, use your ult on them. And that's not a huge change, it's just now it doesn't gain HP again, which kind of makes sense. But overall, Bard is still really weak in lane. But the thing about Bard is that he's not meant to be a solo queue champion. He is only good in, in sort of a, a ranked fives competitive play. So these changes will definitely help that. And it definitely won't make him a strong solo queue champion. Elise got a couple small buffs this patch. She moves slower in human form, but a good amount faster in spider form now. This will help her get around the map a little bit. They also increased the missile speed of her cocoon and made it a little bit easier to use her repel. I don't think these changes will make Elise viable. They're a little bit in the right direction, but once again, the jungle item that she uses was nerfed. They took off the CDR and tenacity, which really helped Elise on the old juggernaut slash ancient golem because it allowed her to get Zork boots without really being punished by not having tenacity. So I don't think the meta is very good for her right now. These changes might help a little bit, but I still don't think she'll be good. Eve got some small buffs this patch. Her cooldown for entering stealth goes down as she levels up, which will make it easier for her to go back into stealth later in the game. She lost the passive move speed on her W, which I think is actually pretty significant of a nerf to her. In return, she gets to use her W more often, so it's hard to say how good that'll be. Her issue is still sort of her early clear is really terrible and her build pass not very good. So not sure we'll be seeing Eve too much, but it's a small buff, I guess. So the Aurelia E nerf was not that big of a nerf, but still affects her laning phase since a lot of Aurelias used to max E first on a lot of matchups and now the base damage on it went down by 40 at max level. So that's gonna just make you have worse traits overall, but I think she's still gonna be a strong pick as the crowd control duration was not touched. And I think that was the strongest part of her E. And the skill priority, I think it might mean that people are gonna max W into certain matchups, but I think E's still gonna be the, uh, the first skill to max on her. In patch 5.6, they nerf LeBlanc's ultimate ratios meaning her ultimate spells do a little bit less damage, 0.5 ability power basically across the board. And it's a minor nerf to her damage, I still think she'd be a top 3 assassin even after these nerfs however. Nocturne's getting a buff to his ultimate this patch, which will help him. He's always had the issue of not being able to make many plays early game, and susceptible to getting snowballed on, especially his lanes by the enemy jungler. Nocturne's always been a pretty average pick, he's clear as well, 
It's a pretty strong fighter, doesn't have the most utility, kind of needs to be ahead to be useful, but this chain should help him a little bit. Remus is getting the tiniest buff ever to his Q. He usually max that one last, so it's basically just going to be 10 mana less for his Q for the entire game. I don't think that's going to make too much of a difference, but I guess it might help a little bit. Ramus did get a decent amount of help with the Cinder Hulk item coming out, so I think he's not a bad champion right now, and this will just help a little bit more. So I think Ryze getting his Q buff definitely is going to help him out, but I don't, it's not nowhere near the old Q damage values that he had on all Ryze when he was overpowered. So I don't know if, it's, if this buff is going to be enough for him to be a, a top pick for top lane right now. I think there's a lot of stronger champions and picks right now than a Ryze would be. So I don't think this means much for the champ, but it's definitely a nice buff in the right direction. So with this new patch, they buffed Ryze's Q damage, they increased the base damage of it by 15 at each rank, and I believe that should be a pretty big buff, enough for people wanting to play Ryze again. I don't think he'll be a champion that's played a lot mid, I definitely see it being played top a lot more, however, it's definitely stronger now than it was before by a good margin, and I think people will play it again. Sejuani is getting a double-edged nerf this patch. She's getting reduced damage on her initial hit for her W and reduced slow on her ultimate if you miss them. I think that these will scale her back a little bit, but I still think she'll be one of, if not the best strongler in this patch. Her W still does insane damage. This didn't hit the AoE part of it at all, the consistent damage. And for her ultimate, it's not going to be as big of a slow. This is only if you miss it. If you hit it, you still stun him. And regardless if you hit or miss, you can still slow him with your E directly afterwards. So I think she'll still be in a really good place. So I really like these Singe buffs because it means that you have in one point of on your E, it's going to make it do a lot more damage. If you max your W as you should as an A and a full tank Singe, the E percentage health values is going to help you out in trades and also just be a bigger threat as a full tank with enough CDR. So I think Zion's still strong after the E damage nerf. I think maxing Q is just a better way to go about his skills at nowadays. He's weaker in the range matchups. I think he's stronger against most melee champions that gave him trouble before. So I would just max Q first and maybe get just one point in E and max in W second. So Twitch received a buff on his passive Deadly Venom. Now at level 1, each stack deals 2 true damage. It's not a very big buff though, so Twitch is Still not a very good pick, because there are better ADs that deal more damage and are mobile. So ever since the changes to Vagar where it kind of reworked him and his E suck, he's just kind of not been so good. And these changes are sort of to really help and mitigate some of those changes, but the changes honestly don't do enough for him and he'll likely not see to play still. But regardless, uh, the changes are to his passive, made it so that he gets a little more mana gem, pretty useful, his Q has a hundred range uh, longer not too big for support as you you're, you're going from a before it was a non skill shot now it's a skill shot so it's already uh, more difficult to land and honestly it's not gonna really help him at all and then his E makes it so that enemy dashes won't uh, will get stopped by it and for a support if you do want to play big R support like that doesn't matter at all the only champion that really has a dash is Lucian every other champion is probably just gonna have to flash it if they don't have an escape ability or they just have some sort of jump or whatever. Honestly, Vagar support is not good anymore. The changes that they made to him made his son just way too unreliable. And it was really fairly unreliable before, but now it's just too hard. And this change isn't going to do anything for him. So the Zillion changes are actually fairly big. They're pretty much buffing everything about him. First thing is his health per level goes up by six, which I mean, on paper isn't too much, but as you get a couple levels, in, a couple levels down, it adds up. His Q has a slightly better AP ratio and its mana cost is going down at later rank. It's actually pretty big considering how mana hungry Zillion is. His W also is getting mana, mana cost decrease and the cooldown is going down for early ranks. It's actually pretty big. Makes him a bit stronger in sort of all ins and in team fights and whatnot as you get more rotations of your spells down. And his E mana cost is going down as well. So overall, a lot of mana cost going down. And that's actually really big. Definitely makes him be able to spam more spells in lane. And that's kind of the whole the point of Zillion. You want to be able to spam your spells a lot. And it does mean that you might not have to go for like a tiers or something like that. And you can go for something that has a bit more mana reach or a bit, bit less. He's just a bit less uh, relying on mana. So that's, that's actually really good. 
and I could see him being used for support. But again, all these changes are actually for the mid lane, so it's definitely going to affect mid lane more. It's so they buffed Zillion with this new patch, and it was definitely something that was needed. He was a little bit too weak before, just because his Qs are so hard to hit. So now they made his Q do more damage and cost us mana. It was even more rewarding hitting it and cheaper to use it. They changed the W on it to make it much cheaper, and the cooldown of it is much lower. So his Q and W are basically a lot better now. The synergy with each other works a lot more and costs a lot less mana. So he isn't as mana starved as he was. They increased his health per level, which is nice, but in the grand scheme of things, not going to be the thing that would make or break him. And they made his E cost 50 mana across the board. So basically, they gave quality of life buffs in the sense that he is not as mana constrictive as he was. However, his Q is still insanely hard to hit, and I'm not sure if he's still going to be viable or not, just because it's so hard to land the Q. However, he is much stronger now with these changes. The Rift Scuttler nerf on this patch is one of the biggest changes. Instead of giving vision for pretty much the entire river, it only gives vision for pretty much the direct circle on top of the crab. This will hurt a lot of the junglers that use the crab as protection to not get invaded because now you'll be able to be invaded through the mid side of your jungle and you won't really know unless you put an actual ward there. It'll also change up doing dragons and barons because the enemy team can actually sneak the thing even if you have the crab because it doesn't show the dragon or baron it just shows the area right in front of it so pretty big nerf to the crab vision wise but it'll still give you gold so it'll be used the same way just won't be as effective the jungle gives more xp now later into the game which will help junglers that had trouble farming or keeping up later into the game basically levels one through four it's the same experience five through seven you get more experience and then eight through ten you get even more and then eleven through eighteen you get up to 10% more than last patch. This will just basically keep you more caught up with the overall level of the game by just farming the jungle. I don't think it's something many people will notice, but it'll just be one of those behind the scenes uh, buffs to junglers that'll just make them a little bit stronger overall. So as far as the jungle changes go, it doesn't really matter that much for early game since 1 to 4 doesn't really do anything. It doesn't start getting to be a lot more XP until much later. So levels 5 to 7 is 3, 8 to 10 is 6, and 11 to 18 is 10. So by normally speaking, you're getting ganked at like what, levels 1 through 10. So for half of that, there's not that much experience change. For 5 through 7 is 3, 8 to 10 is 6%. I doubt that's enough to like make it so that you have to play differently in lane. It's, sure, it's a nice buff, but I don't really think it's going to like increase pressure from the junglers or anything. If anything, it make them want to do their camps even more because it gives more experience than before. So they buffed Unholy Grail, and basically it's a lot more mana regen than it was previously. It went from 50% mana regen to 100%, so basically double and the passive on it goes from 15% to 30% whenever you get an assist or a kill. So basically it's a lot more mana regen for the exact same cost as before. So I think it's enough to bring back champions such as like Ziggs and Oriana that are pretty much book reliant and want to just spam the spells and Grail gives them the mana regeneration to do that now. So I think the item will be coming back into flavor and other mids will start rising because of that. 